الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد ويا إن شرح of the كتاب سفينة النجا إن شاء الله تعالى we're going to carry on from where we were last lesson. And today, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to be taking the last segment of the chapter Kitab al-Tahara. And the author, in this uh, segment, he talks about the menstruation and the postnatal bleeding. So inshallah ta'ala, what I'm going to do inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to go, go into, inshallah ta'ala, this chapter, and we're going to take this chapter, bi'idhnillahi al-kareem, for today, inshallah ta'ala. So, al-haydu wal-nifasu. The word al-haydu, the word al-haydu, first of all, before I go into the haydu, the blood uh, that comes from the women are three types. The dima are three types. The first one is Adamul Hayd, menstruation. And the second one is uh, An Nifas. Postnatal bleeding. And the third is um, al istihadah. Al istihadah. And the istihada is continual bleeding. So, inshallah ta'ala, those are the three bloods that come from the women. The first one is al haydu. The second one is al nifasu. And the third one is. Uh, some scholars they categorized it into two. Some scholars they categorized it into two. They said that it's dam, which is tabi'i, natural blood, and dam, blood, which is ghayru tabi'i, it's not natural. The blood that is natural is the hayb, the menstruation, and the postnatal bleeding, the nifas. Those two are tabi'i, they're natural. And the one that is not natural is the nifas, the continual bleeding. It's not natural. Let's start with the first one that the author, rahimahullah, mentioned, which is al haydu al it means, um, in the Arabic language, it means as-sayalanu. As-sayalanu means whatever flows. Whatever flows is, uh, or al is referred to as-sayalanu, that which flows. And the Arabs, they refer to it as Jarayanu damil mar'ah, the flowing of the blood of the woman. That's what it is. Fayruz Abadi mentions the same. And Ibn Hajar rahimahullah mentions the same in Fathul Bari. Walidalika, we know Al Hawdu. Al Hawdu. And the Arabs they done Ibdal of the Waw. Al Hawdu, we, we heard that right? The Hawd. The reason why the word Al Hawdu, Al Hawd, uh, is called Al Hawd is because the water flows to it. The, uh, the, the, the water flows to the Hawd. So it's the same word. 
just that the word al hayd was ya and al hawd the ibdal the changing of the wow happened here the hayd uh, has 10 other names I mean nine other names 10 in total the hayd according to the arabs they have 10 names the first one is al hayd you already have it the first name is al hayd the second name that the arabs gave it is nifas they use the word nifas as the menstruation as well good the third one is diras diras the arabs they use that for hayd as well tamsun tamsun is also known as menstruation i'sarun i'sarun is also known as uh, the hayd so you have five already now hayd nifas dirasun tamsun and i'sarun also another 10 which is dhihkun dhihkun iraqun iraqun firaqun tamthun and the 10th one is ikbarun these 10 the arabs they use it and some of them you may even find them in the hadith like the word Iraqun is found in Hadith Sahih Muslim being used. The, the one Dhihkunna, it's also used in the, uh, in the statements of the scholars um, and it's also even used in the Quran. فَضَحِكَتْ فَبَشَّرْنَاهَا بِإِسْحَاقَ فَضَحِكَتْ فَبَشَّرْنَاهَا بِإِسْحَاقَ فَضَحِكَتْ here means the hayd happened يعني حاضت also the term الإعصار uh, is used by the Arabs and also the word nifas you find it is being used in hadith uh, hadith is Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim in hadithi Abi Salama then these are the ten names used for hayd now I'm going to go into the hayd is, as we mentioned previously, one of the signs of puberty. That this woman reached puberty, hayd is a dalil. It's an evidence. It's a alama. It's a sign for bulugh that this girl has reached age of puberty. Hayd. وَلِذَلِكَ حَافِظُ بْنُ حَجَرْ He transmitted an ijma' He said وَأَجْمَعَ الْعُلَمَاء The scholars are unanimously in agreement عَلَىٰ أَنَّ الْحَيْضَ That menstruation is what? بُلُوغ is reaching puberty في حق النساء In regards to women حَيْض is um, a sign of puberty for the women and also, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, لا يقبل الله صلاة حائض إلا بخمار. Allah does not accept the prayer of the woman who reaches puberty unless she prays with a hijab. And then when the woman reaches puberty, uh, or the woman receives hayd, the salah she has to pray with khimar. Yani she's a girl who is uh, reached puberty. Ala kulli hal da ijma' is the evidence and also the hadith. Another point I want to mention regarding hayd, which is lawnu damul hayd. Sisters, it's very important you learn, write these down. What is the color of the menstruation, hayd? There are four. The first one is 
The first one is, and it's the strongest one, is As-Sawad, black. And that's the, uh, the evidence for that is the hadith of Fatima binti Abi Hubayshin. Fatima binti Abi Hubayshin. She used to receive istihada, continue bleeding. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to her, if it's, so she wanted to know the continued bleeding, which one is the continued bleeding and which one is the menstruation. She wanted to know. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to her, إِذَا كَانَ دَمُ الْحَيْضِ If it's the menstruation blood, فَإِنَّوْ أَسْوَدْ It is black, يُعْرَفُ It's known. Okay, it's known. The second one is that it's red. And that is when it becomes weaker than the black. When it's at the strongest form of the menstruation is black. When, it, when it's about to finish and the woman's menstruation is about to come to an end, it becomes more reddish and it leaves the black. The third one is as-sufra, okay, which is yellowish, yellowish. And then it becomes kudra, which is brownish. When it becomes brown, it means it's coming to an end. As soon as you see the yellow and the brown, it's finished for, for the woman. The yellow and the brown, if the woman does her tahara and she then sees something yellow come out or something brownish, she should ignore it. And the brownish here is, it's white added with black and so it becomes brownish. So ignore it. Don't give any weight to it. The third point I want to mention is the duration of the menstruation. The menstruation. What is its duration? The author, this kitab, Safina to Naja, the author here, he said, He said that the bare minimum of Hayd is one day and night. This is what the author mentioned. يعني زمن الحيض, the duration of the woman's menstruation, he said the minimum is a day and a night. And a lot of the scholars, the muhaqqiqin, have responded to this and they said, لم يأتي في تقدير أقله وأكثره ما تقوم به الحجة. We have no evidence that states the minimum and the maximum. They have it. Yani there is no um, zaman. We don't have. According to the Sharia. So the question here is, is that what is the duration? The author here is saying, Yawmun wa layla. Lakin the scholars of Tahqiq, they said, wa la hadda fi shar'i li aqallihi wa akhtari. There isn't a specific amount for it. We don't have a number for its minimum and its maximum. So what do we go back to? وَإِنَّمَا يُرْجَعُ فِي إِلَى الْعَادَةِ We go back to the custom of the people. This is one of the issues that goes back to what? وَالْعُرْفُ مَعْمُولٌ بِهِ إِذَا وَرَدْ حُكْمٌ مِّنَ الشَّرِيفِ لَمْ يُحَدْ it is one of those things that the Sharia hasn't come, it hasn't given it a, a, a time, it hasn't given it a, 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 a distance, it hasn't given it a duration. That all goes back to the custom of the people. The ada, the norms of the people. Just like what is traveling, what is traveling, that goes back to the people's norms. What the people consider traveling is traveling and what the people don't consider traveling is not traveling. The same is uh, providing for your wife. The Sharia never said you have to give your wives this much money every single month and you can't give them this much. The Sharia didn't say that. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَعَاشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Live with them in what? In ma'roof. Live with them in good. And then what determines what is good? What determines what is good is the custom. So there are some things that the Sharia didn't define. And the Sharia didn't give it a restriction or a number. These issues, they go back to the norms and the customs of the people. And the issue of al-haydu, and the muddat al the duration for the menstruation goes back to al-ada, the norms of the people. That's what it goes back to. It goes back to the norms. Now sisters, and also brothers, note this down. If a woman, she used to know, I mean, she's a woman who's hailed, so she's a woman, ذَاتُ الْعَادَةِ الْمُتَقَرِّرَةِ This woman, she has, a, she has a norms, her menstruation is known, there's a time it starts, and it's a time it ends, she knows that. She works with that. She knows her menstruation. It starts and it finishes. Lambari. It starts the first of every month, methylen, or the middle of the month, and it finishes at this, at this particular... Yani, to her, it's, it's in order. It's in what? It's in order. She has to act upon that. And this is important, especially when the woman receives continued bleeding. If it happens to a woman... That she has continued bleeding, she's just bleeding non-stop. If she's a woman who had an ada, a norms, a schedule, her menstruation used to come on the first and it used to finish on the seventh. It's always been like that, it's never stopped. And now there came istihada, a continued bleeding. She acts upon the timing that she knew. So the first of every month, until the seventh, she withholds. And the rest she considers it to be what? The istihada. And the evidence for that is the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. She said that Fatima bint Abi Hubaysh. Fatima bint Abi Hubaysh, she was a woman, as I mentioned, she used to have continued bleeding. Yani her blood used to go too much. Um... So she came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she said, Ya Rasulullah, I am a woman who has continued bleeding. I never become pure. I'm never tahir, she said. Shall I leave the prayer? I've continued bleeding. Shall I leave the prayer? The Prophet said to her, Inna ma irqun. That is a vein, an artery. bil This is not menstruation. This bleeding that keeps going, it's not hayd. Hey, what is it? It is, um, it is continue bleeding. The Prophet then said to him, فَإِذَا أَقْبَلَتِ الْحَيْضَةِ If the menstruation comes, and she knew it, if your menstruation that you knew comes, فَتْرُكِ الصَّلَاةِ Leave off the prayer. فَإِذَا ذَهَبَ قَدْرُهَا And if that time that you used to have your menstruation, if it leaves, فَغْسِلِي Wash from yourself. Ankadami. Wash from yourself the blood. Do your ghusl and then go pray. This is a woman who is aware of her timing. It comes in an orderly fashion. That's the one. There's a second type, which is she has no order. She doesn't have any order. She doesn't. So what does she do? This woman, she has to go back to إِلَى الْقَرَائِنِ الْمُسْتَفَادَةِ مِنَ الدَّمِي She has to go back to the things that can be identified from the blood. Like the narration I mentioned before, where the Prophet wasallam said, فَإِنَّوْ أَسْوَدْ يُعْرَفْ it's black and it's known. And then the woman, she can see that her menstruation is different to her continued bleeding. Different. 
or the pain that the menstruation gives her is different to that which the continued bleeding gives her, she's benefiting from what she can see. She acts upon that. She acts upon, she acts upon that. As for what the author here mentioned, that the bare minimum of the menstruation is one day and one night is wrong. وَغَالِبُوا سِتَّةٌ أَوْ سَبْعٌ And the majority of the times, the duration of the menstruation is six or seven days, basically. Six or seven. وَأَكْثَرُوا خَمْسَةَ عَشَرَ يَوْمًا بِلَيْلِهَا أو بِلَيَالِيهَا وَأَكْثَرُوا The majority, the longest it can be is 15. 15 days is the maximum. وَأَكْثَرُهُ خَمْسَةَ عَشَرَ يَوْمًا بِلَيْلِيهَا بِلَيَالِيهَا Sorry. 15. Again, we said that this is incorrect on regards to the uh, shaykh. There is no evidence for it. There is not any evidence to mention the duration. Because the ahadith that we have that have been transmitted to us that talks about the duration is either mawquf yani it stops at the statement of a sahabi which cannot be considered a uh, ultimate tr- ultimate uh, evidence or proof it can't be considered it because it's not the statement of the prophet ali or there are some narrations that have come have come from the prophet sallallahu alaihi which are unauthentic which are weak so this concept of the maximum is this or the minimum is this is weak it's weak <laughs> what is it which is the fifth point I'm going into now. I've spoken about four points. What are the four points that I spoke about? The first point I spoke about was the definition uh, of Hayd. And in there I also mentioned the names uh, of Hayd. So that was the first point. The second point, what I spoke about is Alamatul Bulugh. Reaching puberty, one of it is what? Al-Hayd. Hayd is one of the signs of puberty. I spoke about that. The third thing that I spoke about was the color of the Hayd. The color. And the fourth, I spoke about the duration. Muddatul Hayd. The duration of the Hayd. And we discussed that, that there is no minimum and there is no maximum. This all goes back to Al-Ada, the norms. The fifth point that I want to go into, inshallah ta'ala, is what is prohibited from the woman who is on her menstruation? What is prohibited from her? What can't she do? What can't she do? The first thing that she can't do is As-salah She can't pray The woman Who's on her menstruation She can't pray Salah is not allowed from her And the evidence for that is Mu'adha She asked Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha And she said Ma balul ha'id Why is it that the woman who's on her menstruation she has to bring back the fasting. And that she doesn't have to bring back the prayer. Why is the woman who's on her menstruation, she has to bring back the fasting, but she doesn't have to bring back this prayer? So this you see, she doesn't pray. The woman doesn't pray. When Aisha was asked that question, she said to Mu'adha, This is something that used to happen to us at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. فَنُؤْمَرُ بِقَضَاءِ الصَّوْمِ وَلَا نُؤْمَرُ بِقَضَاءِ الصَّلَاةِ We used to be commanded to bring back the fasting, but we were not commanded to bring back the prayer. We are slaves, we need to do what our, our Master Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells us to do. So the woman who is on her menstruation, she cannot pray. 
Number two, at-tawaf hawl al-Kaaba, fardan aw nafla. She cannot circumambulate around the Kaaba, whether it be a voluntary or whether it be an obligatory. Whether it be obligatory, such as Umrah or Hajj, or whether it be a voluntary tawaf, where the person came into the haram and they just want to go around the Kaaba. Whichever of those, a woman is not allowed to do tawaf around the Kaaba. Whether it be a super, superrogatory act or whether it be an obligatory act, it doesn't matter. A woman who is on her menstruation is not allowed to circumambulate around the Kaaba. Not allowed. What is the reason for that? The reason is because لِأَنَّ الطَّوَافَ بِمَنْزِلَةِ الصَّلَاةِ Tawaf, circumambulating around the Kaaba, is like prayer, as the Prophet ﷺ has said. At-tawafu bil bayti salatun, the Prophet said. The tawaf around the Kaaba is a prayer. Illa anna Allah ahalla lakum fi al-kalam. The only difference is that in the tawaf you are allowed to talk, and in the salah you are not allowed to talk. فَمَنْ تَكَلَّمَ And if anyone wants to speak in the tawaf, فَلَا يَتَكَلَّمُ إِلَّا بِخَيْرٍ Don't say anything except good, the Prophet said. So, the tawaf بِمَنْزِلَةِ الصَّلَاةِ It is at the position of the prayer. So a woman is not allowed to do tawaf around the Kaaba without tahara. The same way she's not allowed to pray without any tahara. The third thing, that is haram from the woman who is who, who's on her menstruation, she can't do is as-sawmu, she can't fast. She's not allowed to fast. She's not allowed to fast. And she has to bring it back. She has to. She has to bring it back after Ramadan finishes. And the evidence for that is the hadith I mentioned in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim that Mu'adha asked, our mother Aisha, مَا بَالُ الْحَائِضِ تَقْضِ الصَّوْمَ وَلَا تَقْضِ الصَّلَاةَ قَالَتْ She said, كَانَ يُصِيبُنَا ذَلِكَ مَعَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ فَنُؤْمَرُ بِقَضَاءِ الصَّوْمِ وَلَا نُؤْمَرُ بِقَضَاءِ الصَّلَاةَ As I mentioned before, Mu'adha asked Aisha, why is it that we are commanded to bring back the fasting, but we are not commanded to bring back the prayer? Aisha then said to her, eh, this used to happen to us. At the time of the Prophet وسلم, you, we were commanded by the Prophet to bring back the fasting. But we were not commanded to bring back the prayer. The third thing, um, sorry, the fourth, the fourth thing that is not allowed, uh, it is الوضع في الفرج وما يباح من الحائض الوضع Sexual intercourse. Sexual intercourse. It is not allowed. Whilst the woman is on her menstruation. It's not allowed. Also what is not allowed is for the man to enjoy that area of the woman while she's on her menstruation. In any other way. Even if it's not sexual intercourse and there's no penetration, he's not allowed to enjoy her in any other way while she's on her menstruation. Yani, that whole area is off, uh, off sight. He's not allowed. ولذلك, our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said that the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam, he used to cover her thighs, yani from her navel to her knee. Yani from her knees to her navel. Aisha said the Prophet used to cover that and he would enjoy me. In the hadith of Haram ibn Hakim an Ammihi from his uncle, he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, مَا يَحِلُّ لِي مِنْ إِمْرَأَتِي What is allowed for me regarding my wife? What am I allowed to do with my wife? وَهِيَ حَائِضْ While she's on her menstruation, what am I allowed to do with her? The Prophet said, لَكَ مَا فَوْقَ الْإِزَارِ Anything that is above her navel is allowed for you. Anything above her navel, you're allowed. 
but low, below that you're not allowed. Either sexual intercourse or anything other than that, whilst she's on her menstruation, you're not allowed. And that is what Allah Taala said in the ayah. He said, فَعَتَزِلُ النِّسَاءَ فِي الْمَحِضِ وَلَا تَقْرَبُوهُنَّ حَتَّى يَطْهُرْنَ فَإِذَا تَطَهَرْنَ فَأْتُوهُنَّ مِنْ حَيْثُ أَمَرَكُمُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ يُحِبُّ التَّوَابِينَ وَيُحِبُّ الْمُتَّطَهِرِنَ Stay away from the women. فِي الْمَحِضِ while they are on their menstruation. وَلَا تَقْرَبُوهُنَّ Do not come close to them. Do not come close to them here doesn't mean when you're in the house, you do social distancing. And she's over there, you're over there. Hi, bye. No, not like that. And it doesn't also mean that when she gives you something, you say, don't give it to me. Just put it on the side of the table and I will come and I will pick it from the side of the table. No, not like that. The ayah doesn't mean that. Wala taqrabuhuna doesn't mean that. What it means is that do not uh, have sexual into. Uh, do not, sorry, do not enjoy your wives between the knees to the navel. Don't, do, don't go that area. That's, don't go close to her private part. That is what the ayah means. وَلَا تَقْرَبُهُنَّ حَتَّى يَطْهُرْنَ Until they, uh, they do tahara. فَإِذَا تَطَهَرْنَ But when they do tahara. Now what do you do? فَأْتُوهُنَّ Come to them. مِنْ حَيْثُ أَمَرَكُمُ اللَّهِ فَأْتُوهُنَّ مِنْ حَيْثُ أَمَرَكُمُ اللَّهِ Come to them from the places where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you. Some people, they've misunderstood this verse and they thought that when the woman purifies herself, it is obligatory upon the man to have sexual intercourse with his wife. Uh, it is obligatory. If she does tahara, he's a sinner if he doesn't have sexual intercourse with her. And when you ask them why, they say to you, because didn't Allah not say فَأْتُوهُنَّ Allah is commanding us. And the command that comes from Allah shows obligation as it, as it is in the books of Usul al-Fiqh. That if Allah commands you something or the Prophet commands you something, you have to do it and it's not a choice. Since Allah Taala said here, فَأْتُوهُنَّ Come to them. It's a command. It is a command. And so the command shows obligation, I must do it. The scholars, they said that this is a misunderstanding on the part of that person. Which is, if there comes a command in the Qur'an, if you see a command in the Qur'an, but that command, it came about after a prohibition. Okay, understand this point. If you see a command, but this command, it came after a prohibition. Then this command is not seen obligatory. It is seen as whatever the thing was before it was prohibited. I hope these people, I hope people understand here. From here, the man, it was permissible for him. It was permissible. It wasn't obligatory. It was permissible for him to have sexual intercourse with his wife. He was allowed. It was permissible. Then the Sharia prohibited from him this period of time while she's on her menstruation. You're not allowed to go close to her. A prohibition came about after the, uh, before it was a permissibility. You're allowed to. And then the prohibition came. And then the command came, which is Fatuhunna. This command takes the ruling of what it used to be before it was prohibited. What was it? What was it before? Uh, the prohibition, it was permissibility. Yani jais, you're permissible. Another example like this is Qawluhu Ta'ala, the statement of Allah, Ya ayu al-ladhina abanu, idha nudiya li-salati min yawm al-jumu'ati, fasa'u ila dhikri lai, wa daru al-bay'a. Thalikum khayru lakum in kuntu ta'alamun. Fa'idha qudiyati al-salatu, fa'antashiru fi al-ardi wa abtagu min fadlillah. Fa'antashiru fi al-ardi wa abtagu min fadlillah. What does it mean? This ayah is saying that when the khutbatul jum'ah finishes and you've listened to the khutbatul jum'ah, the ayah says, فَانْتَشِرُوا فَانْتَشِرُوا is a command. Disperse. Disperse. 
So does that mean when the khutbatul jum'ah finishes, you have to go and disperse? Huh? I can't stay in the masjid. I cannot sit there and wait for Salatul Asr. Do I really have to leave on Friday? Can I just not sit there? Because Allah is commanding you here. No, we say this command came about a prohibition. Prohibition was what? You were not allowed to sell the time the khutbah was going on. The sharia now is commanding you to go out and buy and sell. It's going back to the original ruling, which is permissibility. And this has been used in many places in the Quran. Um, I just hope that point has been understood. The ayah then says, فَإِذَا تَطَهَرْنَ فَأْتُوهُنَّ مِنْ حَيْثُ أَمَرَكُمُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ يُحِبُّ التَّوَابِينَ وَيُحِبُّ الْمُتَطَهِرِينَ Anas ibn Malik mentioned, أَنَّ الْيَهُودَ كَانُوا إِذَا حَاضَتِ الْمَرْعَى The Jews were a people. If their women reach menstruation, يعني حيض happened to their wives, they will never eat with her. If the woman was on her menstruation, a, a husband, if his wife was on menstruation, the Jews, they will never eat with her. And they will never come, they will never have sexual intercourse with her. And they won't come close to her. Okay? And they would even take her outside the house. Naam. There was a place they built for her, she would stay in there. Rather, what they used to do was, while she's on her menstruation, they will not come close to her and they will not go to her and she will be in that uh, uh, cage, cage, cage that was built in her, she will stay inside there and they will give her food from a stick and she would eat when her menstruation finishes they send to her a sheep and some water and they say to her um Clean yourself with this water and rub yourself against this sheep. And it was mentioned that because of her being in there for too long and not cleaning herself and not cleansing herself, that the smell that will come from her could sometimes cause harm to the animal that she's cleaning herself with. This was mentioned by some of the scholars. That's how they used to treat the women. Islam came... And it said, the only thing you can't do with her is sexual intercourse. But she's your wife. You can sleep next to each other. You can have a um, good time together. You can, have, uh, you can be intimate with each other as long as there's no sexual penetration. And as long as you don't go to that area between her knees and her navel, anything else is permissible for you. Islam said that. The only thing that's prohibited what? The Prophet said, Isna'u kulla shay. Do everything. Illa nikaha. Except sexual intercourse. You're not allowed to do that. That is haram. You're not allowed to do that. <coughs> what about if a man, he uh, has sexual intercourse with his wife while she's on her menstruation? A man... Uh, has sexual intercourse with his wife whilst she's on her menstruation. What is the ruling? Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, regarding the man who has sexual intercourse with his wife whilst she's on her menstruation, يتصدق بدينار, he has to give a dinar. Or binisfi dinar, or half a dinar. So the question here is, the narration mentions he has to give one dinar or half a dinar. Without a doubt, he's a sinner. He's a sinner. Written for him is a sin because he went against the command of Allah wa Taala, which is, فَاعْتَزِلُ النِّسَاءَ فِي الْمَحِيضِ وَلَا تَقْرَبُونَ حَتَّى يَطْهُرْنَ. He went against Allah's command. He's a sinner. But what does he have to give as an expiation? The narration mentioned, the Prophet ﷺ said that he has to give يَتَصَدَّقُ بِدِينَارٍ أَوْ بِنِصْفِ دِينَارٍ A dinar or half a dinar. 
So which one does he have to give? A dinar or half a dinar? Abdullah ibn Abbas mentioned that this takhyir in the hadith doesn't mean you choose which one you want to give. No, it doesn't mean that. It means when does the man have sexual intercourse with the wife? If he has sexual intercourse with her at the beginning of when the menstruation starts, then he has to give one dinar. Whereas, if he has sexual intercourse with her in the latest uh, stages of her uh, menstruation, then he gives half a dinar. Half a dinar. Those are the um, five points that I wanted to talk about regarding the hayd. And that's important that we understand. Okay? The author then says, أَقَلُّ الطُّهْرِ بَيْنَ الْحَيْضَتَيْنِ خَمْسَةَ عَشَرَ يَوْمًا According to him, the author, he's saying that the menstruation, the maximum it could be what? It's 15. Maximum. The menstruation, the maximum could be 15. Whereas the purification of the woman, the bare minimum is 15. Makes sense, right? But remember, imagine 15 days he's saying that menstruation can be then the tahara is 15, which is the month. وَغَالِبُ أَرْبَعَةٌ وَعِشْرِينَ يَوْمًا And the majority of the times, the tahara is actually what? 24. Majority of the women, they'll tell you, it's 24. Six or seven days is my menstruation. أو ثلاثة وعشرون يوما Or it's 23. So it's six or seven days where menstruation is, then... Her tahara is going to be 23 or 24. The maximum that the woman can be in a state of tahara is unlimited. Some women don't have hayd for five years. She's tahir. She's tahir. Now the author goes into the second type of um, blood. The second type of blood which is known as an nifas. What is the nifas? The nifas is khariju wilada. It is the blood that comes after giving birth. Remember this, the fuqaha, they dispute amongst themselves, and there's a discussion amongst the scholars, the fuqaha, the jurists, whether menstruation can happen to the woman whilst she is pregnant. Some of the fuqaha believe a woman can have menstruation whilst she's pregnant. And some of the scholars, they believe that the blood that the woman sees when she's on her menstruation, sorry, the blood that the woman sees when she's pregnant, okay, is called dam, which is fasid, corrupt blood, it's not hayd. And some scholars believe a woman who's pregnant can have, can have a menstruation. And I personally believe um, that this issue goes back to the doctors. Uh, this is the issue that goes back to the doctors. The doctors are the ones who determine whether a woman can have a menstruation while she's pregnant or not. Okay? Reliable doctors. They can say this. And they're the ones who determine it. Ala kulli hal. We're not going to go into that now. We're not going to go into that now. The istiha, sorry, the nifas is what? What's the blood called nifas? The nifas blood is the one that comes after giving birth. After giving birth, the woman bleeds. And this blood is the maximum it can go on for is 40 days. 40 days is the max. 41 is that, that one day is considered uh, is considered to be uh, istihada. So she has to pray. And she can have sexual intercourse. And she can fast after 40 days. If it's still going on. 40 days like it, it's what? Uh, it is 
and Nifas. And the evidence for this is the hadith of Umm Salama, radiallahu ta'ala, anha, she said, kanatin nufasa'u. The women who are uh, in the state of Nifas, and who gave birth, tajlisu ala ahdi rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arba'ina yawma. They used to sit, and they used to stay away from praying, and they used to stay away from fasting for 40. For 40. What about, she's only been bleeding for 20. For 20 days, and it stopped. Tahir. Things over now. She doesn't say, oh, I'm still going to wait for 40. La, 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 la. No, she doesn't. 20, okay. Pray your salah, fast, and etc. And if it carries on after 40, now, she purifies herself, she cleans, her, she does her ghusl, and she ignores this blood, and she considers it to be what? Blood which is, um, a blood which is istihaba. Question now. This blood is called nifas. It's called nifas. When does the woman claim that she gave birth? When can she say, I gave birth? And this blood of mine is nifas. The fuqaha, they say, she has to give birth to what? A human being. If she gives birth to an alaqah, or a mudra, a piece of meat, a clot of blood, there's nothing to it. No alama, signs, nothing on it. There's no body to it. She does not take the ruling of the nufasa, the woman who's on her postnatal bleeding. She doesn't take it. As a side point, I want to mention some issue very important, and I think it's vital to mention it, which is Tahrimul Isqati Ba'da Nafkhir Ruhi. It is haram to do abortion. After the ruh has been blown into the child. After the ruh is blown into the child, you're not allowed to do abortion. It's haram. And this is a unanimous agreement. It's an ijma'. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he transmitted the ijma' in his majmu' al-fatawa. He said, Isqatul hamli haramun bi ijma' al-Muslimin. Abortion. It is haram by unanimous agreement amongst the scholars. And it is considered And it falls under the ayah Those people who buried their, their, their daughters alive. Kufar of Quraysh, they used to bury their daughters alive. This ayah is referring to them. It's like burying your child alive. Falls under that ayah. It is al wa'du al-ladhi qala Allahu fihi wa idha al-mawudatu su'ilat bi ayi dhan min qutilat. And it also falls under wa la taqtulu awladakum khashyata imlaqin. Do not kill your children. Fear of um, fear of uh, feeding them. You're scared I can't feed them. Uh, Naam. You're not allowed to do it. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he placed alayhi salatu a dia. A dia means what? Blood money. For the child who uh, has been aborted once it became uh, the ruh was blown into it. The Prophet wrote blood money for it. And it happened to a woman. In the hadith, and Imam al Bukhari and Muslim both narrated. When is the ruh blown into the child? Four months. After four months, it's a, it, a, a ruh has been blown into it. Al Imam al Qurtubi, rahimahullah, he mentioned, Lam yakhtalif al ulama, the scholars are not in any differences. Yani there's no khilaf amongst the scholars. And nafkha al ruh, that the blowing of the ruh, fihi yakunu ba'da mi'a wa ishirina yawman, 120 days. Okay? And that is what? Four months, right? That is four months. So it's four months entering into the fifth month. Completed four months. And is about to enter the fifth month. That's when you're not allowed to do it. Al-Imam al-Nawi, rahimahullah, he said, اِتَّفَقَ الْعُلَمَاء The scholars are unanimously in agreement. عَلَىٰ أَنَّ نَفْخَ الْرُوحِ That the blowing of the uh, ruh, the soul, sorry, 
la yakunu illa ba'da arba'ata ashur is only after four months also what I wanted to mention here is what is haram from the woman who's on her postnatal bleeding what is it that is not allowed for the woman who's on her postnatal bleeding everything that is haram for the hayd is also haram for the what postnatal bleeding such as salah is not allowed for the postnatal bleeding woman also at tawaf hawl al ka'bah fardan aw nafla whether it be a supererogatory act or whether it be a voluntary act a woman who's on her postnatal bleeding cannot do tawaf around the ka'bah as sawm she cannot fast al wat'u fil farji you can't have sexual intercourse with a woman who has postnatal bleeding so the the ruling for the hayd and the nifas are the same okay in terms of what you can and can't do there's a third type of uh, bleeding that must be mentioned and the author here he didn't bring it up like in the scholars who explained the book they brought it up which is al-istihadah al-istihadah is what is known as the continued bleeding which is the third type of bleeding okay the istihadah is an yastamirra bil mar'ati khuruj ad-dam the blood is continuously carrying on it's not stopping and it's going on after her bleeding it's carrying on ah it might even carry on four five days after her menstruation it just carries on and etc so let me mention some issues related some ahkam related to the istihada the women that have it the first point that i want to mention is you are allowed and it is permissible to have sexual intercourse with a woman who's on or who's having continued bleeding continued bleeding does not prohibit uh, sexual intercourse yeah, and he said sexual intercourse is permissible uh, with a woman who has continued bleeding it is permissible and the evidence for that is uh, the sister of Zainab bin Tijash um Hamalat ibn Jahsh she said that annaha kanat she was a woman that used to have istihada she used to have it wa kana zawjuha her husband yujami'uha he used to have sexual intercourse with her the same with is um habiba uh, she used to have hayd wa kana zawjuha her husband kana zawjuha yughashiha he used to have sexual intercourse with her um and um habiba is married to who um habiba is married to abd rahman ibn auf radiyallahu ta'ala anhu one of the 10 that was promised jannah alive and Hamana was married to another man from the Ten Promised Jannah, which is Talha, Talha ibn Ubaidillahi. The sister of Zainab ibn Tijah was married to Talha, uh, Talha, bin, uh, Talha ibn Ubaidillah. The second thing that I want to mention for the istihada is the first one was what? She can have sexual intercourse. There's no problem. Ah, there's no problem. The second thing that is uh, what I want to mention is. The woman who's the mustahada, the woman who's on her continued bleeding, it is obligatory for her. Al wudu ali kulli salah. For every single salah, she has to do wudu. She has to do wudu for every single prayer. And the evidence for that is the Prophet Sallallahu what he said to Fatima bint Abi Hubayshin. He commanded her to do wudu for every prayer. Uh, he said, Tawadda'i li kulli salatin. Do wudu for every prayer. The wudu cannot be done before the time of the entering of the prayer. Okay? So when the salah enters, she does the wudu. And she prays, even if it comes out of her. Okay? She can't do it two hours earlier, or an hour earlier, or time before the salah. No. It's when the adhan goes off, she goes and she does wudu. Ah. She goes and she does wudu. If the woman is struggling... Uh, to do wudu because of every, she's not always at home. She's sometimes outside. She she can't find water and whatnot. Then she takes the ruling of the tayammum. But she still has to do either a, a wudu or a tayammum. The third point that I want to mention is the woman who's in istihada. The woman who is upon istihada. 
She is one of two situations. Mm -hmm. One of two situations. The first, first situation is, the first situation is, the duration of her hayd is known to this woman before this istihada started. Yani she knew her timing. It used to come on the first of every month. And on the seventh of every month, she's finished with her hayd. And that's how it used to be. She became 30, 30 years of age. A istihada started on her. She's confused. What does she do in this situation? She acts according to her um, hayd. So she says, I know my hayd. It's from the first to the seventh of every month. Those days I'm going to stop praying. I'm going to stop fasting. I'm not going to have sexual intercourse. I'm not going to do the wafer on the Kaaba. On the eighth day, she can have sexual intercourse. She prays. She fasts. She can go around the Kaaba and do tawaf. That's the first one. The second one is Muddatul Hayd, Ghayra Ma'rufa Lil Mustahada. This woman, the day her Hayd started, was the day her continued bleeding started as well. It was together. Or, or, she was a woman whose Hayd just never had a order. It was never organized. Sometimes it will come here, sometimes it will go there, sometimes it comes here, it changes. It's not organized, okay? Oh, third. It was organized, but the sister didn't take a note of when her menstruation was. And so she forgot. It slipped her mind. Well, that's why some of the scholars, they encourage their sisters to help the mufti because this chapter of al hayd wal istihada is a big issue. It's a big issue. Okay? It's hard to answer it because some women, they will come with uh, unprecedented situations that you've never heard of. Like, okay, what do you do with this situation? Okay? Um, so what you need to do, sisters, is that there are these apps, you download them, you save you save your hail time. So even if you grow older and you don't remember it, you can always go back to your app and check and say, yeah, this is when it used to be. So you can distinguish it from the istihara. Ala kulli hal, the second type is a woman who didn't know her hail for whatever reason it may be. She doesn't know it. The duration of her hail, she doesn't know. She's confused. So now the istihara and the hail are mixed. What does she do in this situation? In this situation, her hayd is going to be six or seven days. It's going to be six or seven days. And those six or seven days, some of the scholars, they say, before some of the scholars, they say, those six or seven is going to be chosen from within istihada. And that's going to be considered her hayd. And the rest is going to be her istihara. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُ Some other scholars, they say, لا. Because women, if they are around another woman, their menstruation cycle becomes the same. It becomes the same. So the, women's, with the women of her family, she chooses the person that she's with, her menstruation. Six to seven. Okay. This is, of course, I'm talking about, this is a woman who doesn't know her hayd. She can't recognize it. She cannot recognize it. There's no way to, she doesn't know which one is which. Okay, she's confused. Um, and the way to recognize it is three ways, the scholars say. Color, the density, and the odor. The odor of the hayd is not pleasant. The density, it's thick. The color, as I mentioned, is those four colors I mentioned. Aswad. Uh, no, Aswad, naam. Ahmar. Uh, Sufra and Kudra. And those four. 
She can't tell. It looks the same as the istihada. This woman, that which seems, inshallah ta'ala, that I'm going to say for now, is that she follows the sister, her sister, or her daughter, or the daughter follows her mother, and etc. This, that's, inshallah ta'ala, the verdict for her. That's, inshallah ta'ala, the most important points that you need to know regarding istihada and nifas and hayd. And those are the three types of blood that come from the women. Two, the first two that I mentioned, which is al hayd and nifas are natural blood. They're considered to be what? Dem, uh, which is tabi'i, natural blood. The last one is not natural. Um, it's not uh, natural. Um, as a side point, I want to mention one last point, which is um, women who are on their menstruation or on their postnatal bleeding, they must participate uh, the uh, Eid, the Eid gathering. They come to the place where the people are uh, gathered, but they don't come to the musalla. They don't sit in the musalla, but they come out from their houses that day. And they sit there, but they stay far from the musalla. وَلِذَلِكَ the Prophet وسلم, he said that the women who are even, the ones who don't come out, they must come out that day. The Watul Khudur, the women who are in their inner chamber, must come out. They have to. Wal Huyyad, Wal Nufasa, the women who are on their postnatal bleeding and those which are on their menstruation. As the Huyyad also means the postnatal bleeding. They must come out. Wa Yashhadna al Khayra, they participate in this Khayr that's happening. Wa Da'watul Mu'minina, and the good of the believers. وَيَعْتَزِلُ الْحُيَضِ The women who are on their menstruation, they stay away from al-musalla, the places where the men are, the people are praying, they stay away from it. Insha'Allah ta'ala, that's the most important things, that's the most important thing that insha'Allah ta'ala, I believe that we needed to know regarding the ahkam uh, al-hayd uh, wal-nifas. The rulings regarding hayd and nifas and istihada. We have now walillahi alhamdu wal minna. We have finished, finished uh, kitab al tahara from the uh, the book um, Safina al Nadia. We did kitab al tahara. Inshallah Taala, we're gonna start next week kitab al salah. I think Inshallah Taala. Next week we're gonna start. We're gonna start. Kitab al-Salah bi-idhni Allah al-Kareem. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me as shaytan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa tawilaik.